Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. George's by the River on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Everything you need for the service is in the bulletin, and it begins at the top of page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, who knowest our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking, have compassion, we beseech thee, upon, upon our infirmities and those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Mercifully give us Give us for the worthiness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked and saw three men standing there near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on. Since you have come to your servant, so they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. To them he said, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please join with me in saying Psalm 15, as is found on page 3 of your service leaflet. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, (coughs) who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue, He does no evil to his friend. He does not keep contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, rather thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of all things. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, 
and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became the servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to, you, to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how many great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. please be seated. So we have spent the last few weeks reading and listening Jesus talking about community, teaching about how we are supposed to treat our neighbors, teaching about who are our neighbors, loving our enemies, We've talked about our baptismal covenant and generally what it means for us as current believers in Jesus, what it means to follow Jesus. In this week's gospel, those themes move a little closer to home. While the story of Martha and Mary touches on faith, it also touches on thinkers and listeners and doers. And all of this is found in this very short story about the interaction between Jesus and the two sisters. Now I'm guessing that if you were raised with any siblings, parts of this story probably ring true for you. Whether it is the seemingly unequal workload or maybe Martha tattling to Jesus. And even if you've never heard this, has anybody not heard this story before? Okay. Because even if you've not heard this story before, I think even the first time you hear it, you're like, 
Oh yeah, if you spend any time in a family at all, you know, oh yeah, this, this is really what happened. We know how this works. You know, Jesus, I've been cooking and I've been cleaning and dusting and making the beds and, and, and Mary, well, Mary's just sitting there. You know, like Mary always does, tell her to help me. I think conversations like that are not unknown even as adults, which is why I was taken by the uh, image on the cover. It's not a great painting, but I love taking that old story and putting a modern spin on it with, uh, with Martha running the vacuum and Mary sitting with her cat at Jesus' feet. Today's story also involves a little something called triangulation. I don't know if any of you have heard of that outside of a math class. It's a form of psychological manipulation, and it's what Martha is trying to do in this story. So rather than go to Mary and say, you know, Mary, I really want you to help, or Mary, you really need to help me, rather than confronting Mary directly, Martha decides, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rope Jesus into this. And Jesus can be the bad guy so that I don't have to be. Maybe she thinks, well, if I point out to Jesus that, you know, Mary's just sitting there, and if he wants to eat, you know, he's got to be nice to me, then maybe he'll get her to help out. Lord, do you not care that my sister doesn't do a thing? Jesus doesn't take the bait. Instead, he scolds Martha about being worried and distracted. And he tells Martha, you know, maybe, maybe because Mary hasn't spent the day running around doing things, she has made the better choice. And that Jesus isn't going to take that away from her. Is this short story, is this pericope supposed to be instructional in some way for us? I mean, on one hand, I suppose we could read this or hear it and reflect on our own familial relationships, our own relationships with our siblings. Maybe on one level, it's supposed to be, this is how not to treat your siblings. Maybe the workload should be even. Maybe you should both be sitting at the feet of Jesus or both cleaning. Or maybe... It's supposed to be an allegory for what it means to live a life of faith. That maybe sometimes we are supposed to sit at the feet of Jesus. We are supposed to sit there and contemplate the words. We're supposed to sit there and contemplate those acts of Jesus and not necessarily rush around doing If you remember in last week's passage, last week a young lawyer went to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, do. Do this and you shall live. Now this week the answer seems to be sit down and listen. As Mary is praised for sitting at the feet of Jesus with Martha being called out for being distracted and worried and rushing about. I mean, part of me wonders, what would my reaction be if Jesus showed up knocking on the rectory door? Part of the problem with approaching Jesus' story today, or the story from Jesus with Martha and Mary today, if there is a problem, is that I think we have a tendency to view it as a zero-sum game. That is, we hear the story and we identify with one of the characters. And depending on how that goes for us, we decide that either Martha or Mary is right. There are two choices. We either sit at Jesus' feet and do nothing and listen, or we rush about making sure that everything is tidy that people's needs are being met. But if we clump together last week's gospel, 
what must I do? You must do these things. With this week's gospel, Mary has chosen the better part by sitting at my feet and listening. If we clump those two together, we have a conflicting set of instructions. Lord, which is it? Are we to do? Are we to sit? Maybe if we approach this story with the thought that both parts are necessary. Both parts, doing and listening, sitting and listening, are parts of the one thing that Jesus talks about again and again and again in the Gospels. And that that is, this is what it means to be my disciple. Notice what Jesus doesn't say at the end of today's reading. He doesn't tell Martha that her sister has chosen the only part or even the best part, the right part, the correct part. In our translation, the NRSV, Jesus tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better part. In other translations, he tells Mary that she has chosen that Martha, he tells Martha that Mary has chosen the good part. Certainly, he chides Martha on being distracted and worried. Now, I don't know about you, but I could use that admonition pretty much every single day as I allow myself to be consumed by the worries of everyday life. You know, Jesus, I can't sit at your feet today. I've got this stack of bills to pay, the card needs serviced, and so on and so on. Although somebody did tell me years ago that in a conversation about this story that if Jesus were to show up at their door, the stack of dirty dishes in the sink would be the last thing they're going to worry about. I admit, and I'm guessing, that it's the same for many of you in this congregation. I don't know if I should ask. Show of hands, who's Martha in this congregation? Raise them up, come on. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I thought. See, I, I know that in this place particularly, there are a lot of Marthas. I readily admit that I am a Martha. I remember, I remember in seminary, you know, when, when being called to ordain ministry is still this mythical thing that's still out there. You know, seminarians sit around and talk about what it might be to be a pastor and a priest and a parish. And one of my classmates had this totally idyllic vision of parish ministry, down to the pipe and the tweed jacket with the patches. <laughs> I'm going to sit in my office and I'm going to read for 16 hours a week, look, dive into the latest theological treatises. I'm going to spend days finally crafting and honing my sermon. Not at all what I had envisioned Paris ministry to be life. I mean, entirely unrealistic. And I, I've never, I don't know how that person, I don't know if that actually came to pass as they had envisioned it. But it wasn't the life that I knew. I expected the life of Martha in parish ministry. All a long about way of saying, I wonder if what we're supposed to learn today in today's story about Martha and Mary is that we should pay attention. That if we are Martha's, then perhaps this story is a call for us to slow down every now and then. To focus on instead of being focused on doing, to focus on listening, to focus on reading, to focus on contemplating God's holy word. Maybe as Martha, we need to look for God, not just in those places where our hands do the work, but maybe listen for that still, small voice every now and then. Now, if we're Mary's, maybe we should not so glibly 
read this story and say, hmm, we're right. Maybe if we're Marys, we need to take a step back and consider that every now and then we are called to do. That instead of faith being practiced here or here, faith can be practiced with these. Maybe Marys need to hear and consider that we are, in the words of St. Teresa, God's hands and feet in the world. And that's what we're supposed to learn today, that we have a choice. We need to consider our choices. And that sometimes, as followers, as believers in Jesus, we are called to be Martha. Not necessarily the distracted or the worried part, but to serve out God's people in doing. And that sometimes the better choice is to simply sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us continue our worship by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, in thy holy word, has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Chip, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And to all people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with me card and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, 
and fill our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And we humbly beseech thee of thy heavenly goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Jim, Norme, David, Diego, Caroline, Chris, Gail, John, Amanda, Dawn, Juan, Nancy, Tom, Di, Terry, Avery, Lynn, the people in Ukraine, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us also remember in our prayers all veterans and all who have given their lives in service to our country and those serving in our armed forces. John, Tim, Nicole, Andrew, Darren, Joseph, Jamie, Matthew, Dan, Riley, and all others. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustain, sustain O Christ, the Episcopal Church, that it may reflect thy glory and follow wheresoever thou leadest. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Kneeling as we are able, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Please be seated. Uh, just take a look at uh, your bulletin. There's uh, some, an announcement from the Outreach Committee. There is the report from the Canterbury Fair and the dollar amount raised. Thank you all for everyone's work on that. Uh, also, the upcoming Stuff a Truck, which is next Saturday. No, sorry. August 13th. August 13th. Wow. Uh, it's like a month from now. I, um, yeah, so, the, yeah, so there, take a look at that. Don't rely on me. Um, Connie.
County. Uh, communion again this morning will be at the rail. The chalice will be offered for intention only. That is a gentle touching of the wafer to the wine. Uh, if you choose not to receive the wine, just simply cross your arms and we will pass you by. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own <clears throat> be given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, <clears throat> and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. 
and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Bring such remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith. With thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Keep this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith. With thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries 
with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some of it, yeah. Are you going with a candidate? No, God, no. <laughs> Aww. I, 
I mean, she's barely just been there. So I don't, you know, we don't want to go that early and, you know. Uh -huh. So I, I don't know. You know, if there might be a possibility to meet my dad. There's no way. There's no way. So. I'll have to figure out where uh, this friend of John's is. So. His It's going to be oh, a little lighter. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, okay. But well, I loved so, your sermon. Thank you. Yeah, we all love that. We did. That was a good one.